In the season opener of Atlanta's fourth and final season, our main characters Ern and Van find themselves trapped in the parking garage of Atlantic Station, an upscale outdoor shopping mall. Looking for an exit, they re-encounter an ex-girlfriend of Ern's named Kenya, who doesn't seem to remember running into them earlier. When they ask her how long she's been looking for an exit, she answers that she doesn't know, recalling Now You See Me Too as being the movie playing at the theater when she arrived. The next scene with our two characters opens presumably back at that same parking garage, although this time the setting is a little bit more surreal. The ceiling overflowing with white cupboards, I think, and the floor sparsely covered with shoppers aimlessly wandering around the room. Ern is eventually able to find what appears to be an emergency exit, and Van follows him through the door into a void of darkness. In the blackness, they crawl through a hallway of soaking wet carpeted walls and eventually make it out, finding themselves with Al at a funeral service for the fictional rapper Blue Blood. It's an odd moment, but this wouldn't be the first time, even in the latest season, that Ern finds himself going through some strange, seemingly unexplainable doorway. In the third episode of the season, Born to Die, Ern embarks on a quest to sign the neo-soul artist D'Angelo, where he is led to a waiting room in the restroom of a rallies. After waiting for almost a week without food or water, Ern demands that he sees D'Angelo. After coming to the realization that we are D'Angelo, the guard unlocks a hidden tunnel that leads to a room where a man claiming to allow Ern to experience D'Angelo explains to Ern what a D'Angelo is. Now, it shouldn't be a surprise that something weird happened in Atlanta. In fact, it's become what the show is most known for. From invisible cars to black Justin Bieber, to this inexplicable moment at the end of value, surrealism has been one of Atlanta's core artistic characteristics since day one, and is both plentiful and more often than not, very much in your face. Think of the transracial segment in the season one episode BAN. I'm a 35 year old white man. But the use of these surrealist doorways in particular, and doorways in general, has become a very identifiable motif, used a surprisingly large amount over the course of the show, whether in the form of hidden exits, Narnia-esque portals, or tunnels hidden in the restroom of a rallies. So what does it all mean? In this video, I'll be going through various examples to demonstrate how doors can be effectively used to tell a story and to figure out what these otherworldly doorways tell us about the surrealist world of Atlanta. A door is never just a door, if you're a good writer or filmmaker that is. When wielded effectively, a simple door can elicit many layers of meaning and bring conflict to your story in many different ways. Doors by function are the entrances and exits for our characters, serving as a signal for the beginning and end of something, representing what one may argue to be the most important element to any story, change. Indeed, a door can represent our character literally crossing the first threshold, the point identified in Joseph Campbell's storytelling template, The Hero's Journey, where our protagonist crosses into the field of adventure, leaving the known limits of their world and venturing into a new realm where the rules and limits are unknown. Going back as far as the pilot, you can identify Urn sliding Paperboy's mixtape directly under the door of the radio station exec, along with all of the money he has to his name, as faithfully following the template, as it's literally the point in the series when our protagonist risks everything and goes all in, entering into an entirely new career and lifestyle. Across film and TV, we commonly see doorways illustrating the threshold, or more accurately, the passageway between life and death, or from one life to another. Recall the satisfying ending to The Truman Show, where Jim Carrey's titular character walks through the exit door from the reality TV show that held him captive into the uncertainty of the real world. Doors also transport our characters to different environments. Think Monsters, Inc., Narnia, Pan's Labyrinth, or anything with portals, really. Is there a whole lot of symbolism and meaning within Doctor Strange's interdimensional portals? Maybe, maybe not, but regardless, doorways, gates, and sure, I guess portals now, are incredibly versatile narrative tools. This is mainly because they're very capable of representing polar opposite ideas and contrasting genres of fiction. Life and death, as we've covered, but also tension and relief, comedy and drama. Doors can be positioned in your story as escapes, 
a sense of relief. A door can protect our heroes from enemies and provide timely departures from terror. This is partly how it's used in the Atlanta episode mentioned in the intro, or when Little Urn desperately hurries from school to the bus doors at the end of FUBU, and again when Al just barely escapes his rabid fans in Amsterdam. But, and sometimes even in the same sequence as the moment of relief, they can also be positioned as objects of grave danger, as sources of tension and anxiety. Just about every horror movie you can think of has used the door for this purpose. I think of Cheryl in the original Evil Dead being so traumatized that she is unable to open the cabin door, but there are so many other examples. Stanley Kubrick loved the door for this purpose. I mean, do I even have to acknowledge it? Here's Johnny! <laughs> Doors are also overly qualified vehicles for humor. Charlie Chaplin certainly loved him some door. Look how much fun he's having. Tim Robinson also thinks the door is pretty funny. And Donald Glover is no different. Recall this moment in the season one episode, The Club. Along with comedy, doors are just as effective as sources of drama. Think of the iconic ending to The Godfather, where, after Michael denies his involvement in the murdering of Carlo to his wife Kay, his capos enter the room and address Michael as the Don, before literally closing the door on Kay. Working alongside Diane Keaton's reaction of distrust and a little bit of fear, the door closing represents the strict walls Michael has built to separate his role as both a crime boss and a family man, and the lack of power that Kay has over Michael, as she no longer can have any insights into his business affairs. Overall, as these examples demonstrate, the door is a worthy device for shows utilized to strengthen their themes, especially for a show that is simultaneously about everything and nothing at all. Atlanta is a show about racism, celebrity, the black experience, exploitation, power, consumerism, the rap game, many different things. It's also a show about Al getting a haircut. Self-described by series creator Donald Glover as Twin Peaks with rappers, the show's relaxed half dramedy half vignette structure brilliantly combines slice-of-life realness with surreal oddity. This is why an episode whose plot is simply Al trying to get a haircut is also an episode about camaraderie, with Bibi's hijinks further being tied to Robin Season's demonstration of Atlanta's hustle culture and the theme of self-preservation. It's ridiculous, but its ridiculousness comes from a place of truth, and an effort, as Donald Glover puts it, to make people feel black. Ruin? I think we had a good day today. I took you to the mentor to some kids, you're welcome, and then we, we ate at that white lady house, and then we hit that Asian lady from the back. But let's get back to those doors. One of the most important themes of Atlanta is progression and upward mobility. Al and Ern going from poor to rich, from nobodies to somebodies, but having their problems, fears, flaws, and insecurities stay with them, while also being unable to escape the many forms of systemic racism, as well as the trials and tribulations that follow fame and fortune. What defines these characters is how they battle this marginalization, and the specific consequences black Americans face with upward mobility. For example, despite being longtime best friends and essentially life partners, Al and Darius could not have any more distinct approaches to life. Darius, being the eccentric guy he is, fights marginalization with his ungovernable, whimsical nature, and Al through his vigilant protection of both his image and his peace. In this way, Atlanta is fundamentally a show about doors opening, exploring what our characters will and won't do to make it to the top. In his excellent article, Hot Atlanta, Hip Hop, and Hegemony, Orlando Wilkerson discusses how the episode Juneteenth explores how Ern and Van, quote, reject the grasps of late capitalism by calling out the bullshit of Van's upper-class friend and her white, African-American culture-obsessed husband, whose connection would have both advanced Van's career and gotten their daughter Lottie into a prestigious private school. The show, especially in its last season, also centers around doors closing, especially in regards to Paperboy's arc. In the episode Born to Die, it is instructed to Al that he must work with young white artists in order to stay relevant and successful. Doors are commonly used in Atlanta to illustrate class and wealth. Compare the door to the storage locker that Ern had been living in throughout season one, to the plantation style high ceiling home of the Juneteenth party, or the grand entrance to the Teddy Perkins mansion, or to any of the luxurious destinations the group would stay in Europe. Doors are also used as foreshadowing devices. Take the shabby looking and purposefully concealing entrance to the decoy house in The Old Man of the Tree 
as a warning sign for the utter phoniness of the European upper-class party that the group attends. But what about the portal door at Atlantic Station? How do you make sense of that? Well, as is the case with everything the show does, there's no real answer, even perhaps from the writers themselves, and a multitude of possible explanations. After watching the trippy series finale, which I might have to make another video on, we all know that this could just be Darius's dream. If it is, then the wetness of the walls and the 20 seconds of complete blackness that Ern and Van endure could be foreshadowing the sensory deprivation tank that Darius had been going to. The moist carpets described and the idea that wherever Van and Ern are exists outside of time and space can also be a reference to the backrooms, a popular urban legend stemming from the internet trend of liminal spaces, images of eerie uninhabited places. Obviously, this being a dream would explain the other surreal aspects in the episode and the series as a whole, like Kenya and everyone else that Van and Ern encounter, supposedly being at the mall since 2016, which is notably the year that Atlanta first premiered, and presumably the year that the story began. Atlanta's fourth season as a whole could be described as a meditation on how we handled the passage of time, facing a troubled past, and embracing an uncertain future which relates back to the series theme of closing doors and opening new ones. We saw Ern deal with his traumatic college years and abuse as a kid with both therapy and pettiness in the following episode, Van disassociate into some French caricature in the season 3 finale, Al detach himself from the world on his farm in the penultimate episode of the season, and Darius, well, not believe in the concept of time entirely. Separate from the idea that this is all simply a dream, I see the Atlantic Station portal door and Ern and Van's embrace of the void to represent a leap of faith and them letting go of the past. Ern opening the exit door and Van following, trusting him, serves as crucial character and relationship development for the couple, giving our characters panic-inducing surreal situations, like an exit door to what could be an endless void, shows us their true colors. This season and even scattered moments across Europe told us a lot about Ern's commitment to Van, but this proves it, and makes his line that he will never let Van become just another one of his ex-girlfriends feel, well, very earned. Atlanta is a show about racism, celebrity, the black experience, exploitation, power, consumerism, the rap game, upward mobility, class, wealth, existentialism, the paranormal, letting go, the human condition, many different things. This is why doorways, tunnels, and portals, incredibly versatile symbols, are commonly used over the course of the show in a myriad of contexts. And whether we're dissecting a mysterious void in the parking garage of Atlantic Station, or the ways in which our characters battle marginalization, Atlanta brilliantly illustrates what the doors we open and the ones we close reveal about ourselves and the world we live in. Thank you guys for watching. Drop your Atlanta theories in the comment section below, and please like and subscribe to support the channel and the algorithm. Thank you guys. See you guys next time.